Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Triforce podcast. If you're listening to this, it means we're probably on holiday this week, uh, and we're going to go through the big mailbag. The big old mailbag. That's right. Uh, Post bag. Some, it's right. the post bag. It's the one and only Triforce bag. Uh, oh. Post bag. It's the post bag. It's a load of crap inside this bag. <laughs> <laughs> when you read the post bag, <laughs> <laughs> you'll have a terrible oh. time, a really bad time, a really, really bad time. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You might as well just read a wiki because most of the most of the stuff coming through here is just regurgitated hash from a wiki anyway, right? Actually, having looked it up, you are incorrect. Oh, well done, genius. You looked it up. We didn't. We're off the top of the dome. Bam. We're freestyling here. So there are going to be mistakes. But that's not what the bulk of the emails are about. Most of them are about poop uh, or toilets or strip clubs. That's pretty much the things that people want to talk about the most. But I'm going to go through this and find some of the, the variety, wide variety of emails. As, as I said, so if you are listening to this episode actually no no no, can i just say very quickly please put the word triforce in the subject line of your email otherwise it doesn't get filtered and i miss it i just want to get that in there every time we do this so it becomes a thing go on this isn't a message from any one fan but it's my brother he's messaged me and because he was meeting me today for lunch and he said we'll get in there early ish for some shopping do you want to go to nando's at one right right so i said don't normally go to Nando's, but sure, I can meet you wherever. <laughs> okay. And, That's an aggressive. You know, man, I feel sorry for your brother immediately. Like, come on. The guy's just trying to reach out. Yeah, but he's trying he to knows, find some common ground. He knows. And so he said, Yes, I know about that, but apparently they do have some vegan stuff on the menu. Yeah. According to my wife, I just checked their menu. Uh, we're going to do some shopping first, so we'll meet you there at one. <laughs> so I'm definitely now going to Nando's. Fuck yeah, love and Nando's. I guess I'm going to discover what their vegan options are. Who uh, gives just, a shit? It's just delicious. Get a, just get a coffee and I'll just say just you're not chips. hungry or yeah, something. I'll be, I'll be fine. I usually get chips. Well, so the you, chips you, you've lived might be cooked in delicious time. chicken fat. You never know. Yes, yes, chicken fat chips. Look, I'm not that bad. I'm just... Uh, I just tried. To, I just tried to divert him to somewhere. Don't less, normally eat less, at Nando's, yeah. Nando's. but uh, <laughs> I could slum it on this occasion if you really need. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. It's just. I, it's like KFC as well. It's like the one uh, other place that's like a um, little bit. Uh, yes, limited. Nando's could work, but uh, I, I know a really nice little place called Eau Claire de la Lune. Uh, maybe you oh, would like yeah. to go there instead. <laughs> I, I know that you, you wanted to meet for lunch, uh, so I've suggested a bistro. Uh, we could. Pay <laughs> have lunch at a bistro at a pitch a brasserie will do uh, definitely not a restaurant a or cafe it must be a bistro or at a pinch a brasserie <laughs> he's coming he's coming to my town and he's like we're going to Nando's and he, I was like are you sure and he's like yes we're going to Nando's. that's basically what happened there he was like I like Nando's my wife likes Nando's we're going to go to Nando's and fuck you. That's what happened in Is that Is it a bistro or a brasserie? A bistro or a brasserie? <laughs> Which one would it be? <laughs> Sounds like you got outvoted there. Two I don't to know one, what the so. difference between those is. Actually, well, that's why likes. I need a bistro or a, at a pinch of brasserie because it keeps <laughs> keeps uh, who a Henry such as yourself well out of the way. It's a better clientele inside a bistro or, as I aforementioned, said, a, a brasserie at a pinch. Yeah, <laughs> it's oh, the kind man. of people who don't know what the difference is don't go. I guess. Yeah, they that's do, right. Get it, stay do. stay out of there. That's not a place for you if you don't if you can't even tell the difference. It's gonna be rammed. It's a Friday lunch time on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a bank holiday weekend yeah it's gonna be absolutely packed why don't there. you go for brunch like uh on a friday oh it's bank holiday right there's no getting around it oh, but i was gonna say like why not go it. like at 11 o'clock in the morning that seems to be a good time to go. Well, because I'm fucking recording this fucking podcast, Sips. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I know, I know, like, I know that's the the reality of the situation right now. But in future, maybe next right. time he comes down, you could say, "Fuck your shopping. Let's go eat first. I'll text so you it's not guys too busy and say, "Sorry, can't record the podcast. My brother and his wife want." to go to Nando's and we have to go before it gets too busy. I mean, I would be, I'd be fairly understanding and accommodating of that, you know, like 
It's just the mailbag episode. Shall we get to the mailbag? Shall we yeah. get to the mailbag? It's been six that minutes. That was a mailbag. That was a mailbag. Was that, that was, was mail you. Bag. That was a mail that from his... That was me getting a text. That's yeah, a bag. From, from, your from his family. From his brother. That doesn't Jeez. count. Well, I'm, I'm, shall Jeez. I read the... Yeah, all right. Well, here we go. Then here's the fucking email my, my mum sent me, the message on WhatsApp. Okay. Let me read it to you. Until further notice, do not contact me on the landline. Call me on my mobile only. Until further notice. <laughs> Until further notice. And I wow. messaged her. Why? Hours go by. It's just that she's having uh, a, her Sky package upgraded, and uh, it's it it won't be ready on, until Friday. Man, who has their Sky? It's 2022. What Why are fuck? you upgrading your Sky package? You should be moving away from the Sky package. There's so many alternatives now. You don't what? need a Sky package. What, what's the alternative? I just get like free set Anything or something, else. and then maybe if you really want to, just get a subscription service like stream service or whatever. What the hell is on Sky that's so important that you need to upgrade she your package? She watches a lot of stuff on Sky, dude. A lot. Right, like yeah. what, like Paramount Comedy all Central and all that shit? shit? Yeah, all of oh that. My all God, of the man. like, all the things. When she comes down, she's like, "You don't have the Real Crime Murder Network." I'm like, "Sorry, Mum." She's like, "No." You know, she's she's all over that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she's yeah. on her own. She watches a lot of telly. And yeah, I, I, I suppose. Well. But like, even like on uh, on on Freeset, the you know, you get like most of those channels. Like, but do you the... get all of them, Chris? No, is the answer. Well, I don't. I technically, I don't know. I'm just. Um, I'm just saying it's a lot cheaper than an upgraded Sky package because you buy the box. <laughs> I agree. And that's it. I yeah. think I'm paying for it anyway. So. Oh God. Man. Anyway, your mum sounds a bit like Mark Landis. Who's he? <laughs> he works at a. He works at a. He works at a brasserie, or is it a? <laughs> yeah, he's a <laughs> he's a, no, he's a mat. He's a. So Mark Landis is this famous American painter who basically is is quite um i don't know he's he's i think he's like a schizophrenic but but he's on medication and he's a bit he's a bit of a weird guy right is he um does he anything to do with jim gahuli no. gilhuli the guy i don't know the glass the glass worker oh no no no, 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 no not the guy who makes big dicks out of glass no he's a good lad though i like oh, him he's a great um, lad yeah he's got an eye patch too i could fill that up my ass uh, that was said, the whole uh, trip. <laughs> every we every piece at. of heat made of. <laughs> Sorry. We went to this glass museum. We talked about it before. And that was all we said. Yeah. And so Mark Landis, he, he, he basically pe- copied. He, 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 was a, he was very good at copying pieces of art. A really, really good artist who would find a picture of a, a piece of art, do a copy of it, and then sort of forge it, basically, and then donate it to a museum right. as kind of a troll but as also a kind of weird way to get his art into museums, right? So he never, it wasn't illegal to do this, you see. And a lot of museums didn't do their due diligence and didn't check it was real and just stuck it up on the wall, um, you know, and added it to their collection. And this guy is sort of in the early 2000s found out because he'd been offered this piece of art by Landis and uh, he would Googled it or whatever. And he found that, you know, three other museums claimed to have it, you know. <laughs> And so he, because because he sort of slipped up really in that he practiced so much to you know copy these pieces of art that he ended up just doing lots of them, and then he gave them to all lots of different people. He he would sort of take these road trips around the country where he'd you know book all these meetings with people and give them all this art. And so there were thousands of pieces of his art that he gave out, and he was sort of this prolific sort of forger slash troll, but obviously very kind of, um, just kind of very innocently doing it and didn't really realise that it was even a problem or that he was even really hurting anyone. He sort of felt like he was gifting. And also, I think, I think what, what, like once he'd done it once as a gift, he kind of got a bit hooked on it because everyone was so grateful to him. Right. right. They were sort of, they took him to a nice dinner, you know, they didn't give him any monetary rewards, but he sort of gained... He just gains charity and sort of friendship of these these people that he'd been giving these things. And those to. are the things that count the most. And he in this he life. was a, he basically would stay at home watching Crime Channel and old movies TVC or whatever the old movies channels on on American cable. And he he was just a very sort of sad man, really. But yeah, just I watched a documentary about it it's called Art and Craft, and it's just so super interesting. Yeah, and I just I just I just I I I, I know I'm not supposed to like him, but he's just he, he's sort of very heroic thing to do really you know fuck over all these these uh bistroian museum owners you know who think they're getting some you know piece of work by Degas for free or whatever from this rich donator mark landis um, um what so why did we 
Why did we start talking about Mark Landis again? Because he watches the same TV as your mum, I think. Right. Oh, right. that was the I, link. I see him. I see your mum sat in her living room doing her puzzles in the same way as I see him doing his art. You know? I see. Right. He's, he's in a. He's in a bit of a. Well, he's, he lived in his mum's house as well. That was the thing. Holy it's crap! She died. He was sort of wasn't really very good at looking after himself, but his mum looked after him pretty well. And when she died. He just sort of carried on in his mum's house with all the stuff in the same place. And right. Sort of got on with it. I think he's still going now. He did, after after sort of getting a bit famous with this um, movie and stuff, he um, started doing his own stuff, I think, and sort of changed his ways and stopped. I think I think people became wise to the game as well, and the internet kind of put a stop to, <laughs> stop his, to a lot of this. His shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, what's the what's the mail? Go on, give us the mail back. Oh my god! I'm just gonna grab I'm, a I'm random one. I'm too exhausted to do this now. We're only twelve minutes into the mailbag episode. After the Mark Landis story, Jesus, I, I think you that's a. I think the Mark Landis story is almost a contender for the bath plug story. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wait. Yeah. All right, well, Maybe next time we do a live show, we could do a vote. Who wants the bath plug story? Do you want the bath plug story, or do you want the Mark Landis, the story oh, of Mark just Landis? Chips, or the Just Chip story. That's or another the just chip story. The just, just Chip story is classic, though. I mean... It was that was good. That had that that had that was a roller coaster ride, right? Whereas the Mark Landis story was just kind of like a slither. Um, oh, sips, you. It's I'm educating you. I'm trying to keep you. You know, you you said before we started. I'm not that you think the Everything is a scam. You think <laughs> yes. you think you think every email that comes into your inbox is a scam, I, and so you don't. Well, read it. it's actually just a front for being very lazy. Like, because now I can turn around and say, yeah, no, I didn't respond to you because I thought it was a scam, but like. Really, I should have just responded. But that's why I think I got it in my head, you know, because, you know, it's kind of everything is, a, everything feels like a scam. Like, sure. you know, there's so many people out there chancing it stuff. Oh. And what's the, what's, I mean, even like adverts are a scam, right? Like they all just trick you into buying something you don't want. And they oh, give you man. this false sense of like that it's going to make you happy or, you know, you'll be on a beach with a hot woman, you know, if you fucking fly with you know, Ryanair or whatever. Man. Do you know what I mean? It's like- yeah, I know what you mean. Listen to this, okay? I, I, I completely uh, need to tell you guys this as a matter of urgency. Yesterday, it was a bank holiday. It was Thursday, okay? I took my son to a birthday party at noon on a Thursday yep. during, during a half-term week on a bank right? holiday. Yeah. I was pretty frustrated by the whole thing. But anyway, I took him. Uh, I took him to this party. He had a good time and everything. Um, it finished at 2, which is standard fare for a kid's party. Yeah. About two, two hours, hours or hell. whatever. Yeah. He had some lunch. I stood around, talked to other dads and stuff. It was all right. So we're driving home, and uh, we were talking about the baby. Um, and, uh, and my son was like, you're a great dad. And I was like, thank you very much. And uh, he's like, do you like being <laughs> a dad? What, what does he want? What do you what do you want? Yeah, well, I mean, I I, I knew there was some angling, but it turns it's out like there wasn't setup. really much angling. So Aww. he's like, You're do you like being a dad? And I was like, Of course I like being a dad. You know, like it has its moments, but like, you know, I, I love all three of you and I like being your dad. Like, of course I love being a dad. And he's like, Oh, that's good. I was like, one day you might be a dad as well, you know, and then you'll you'll know how it goes, sort of thing. He's like, Oh, I never want to be a dad. And I said, well, you're 10, you know, you might change your mind or whatever. Like, okay. just, just see how it goes. And he's like, um, well, I would have to meet somebody and then we would have to have a baby. And I was like, well, yeah, that's typically how it works. Yeah. And he's like, well, who uh, knows the future? Though? Does it have you know? to be, does it have to be a girl? And I said, well, you can have a baby if you, if you marry a man. And you can have a baby, but you know the the, the someone sort else of, has to make it for you. Basically, yeah, that's yeah. it. I said that you know a baby can be made uh, many different ways, um, but you know, like if you want yeah. to, if you want to have a, a baby <laughs> that comes out of your out of your wife's tummy or whatever, um, you know, like you you'd have to marry a girl, or you know, whatever. And so, like, just kind of like vaguely explain this to him. And I said, and, yeah, and otherwise, it's complicated. otherwise, but you, 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 you still need like uh, some involvement from from a man to to make a baby, right? Because like you have male reproductive organs, and then you have female reproductive organs, and then somehow, somewhere, those two need to to you know mix. There's got to right? be a meet in the minds somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. So he goes. 
So, yeah, uh, so it's it, like a cake. So you this, know, you like, need this you're gonna need eggs. <laughs> you're gonna need <laughs> butter. <laughs> you're gonna need to get it together. So I'm trying to explain yeah. this stuff really vaguely, and the whole time I'm like, "Have they not taught you this in school yet?" And he's like, "No, no, no, they haven't taught this in school." Okay, so so this leads into the to the million dollar question: How is how is a baby made? And I was like, "Well, how do you think a baby is made?" Because like I always throw it back, you know. Like if I don't want to answer it, I throw it back. So I was like, "How do you <laughs> think a baby is made?" That's such a sips way of dealing and, uh, with it. He kind of like I looked in the I looked in the rearview mirror because he was sitting I love in the back. If you were like if you were like a university teacher and you were like, so today we're going to teach chemistry one hundred and one. Uh, we're going to we're going to talk about ketones. How do you think? How do you think chemistry works? Well, I mean, it's a pretty good shout. Anyway, I, I look in the rearview mirror because he's sitting in the back, and I see this smirk on his face, and I say. How do you think a baby's made? And he he smiles and he goes, 69? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> All right. He's like, no, you can't make a baby that way. <laughs> like categorically, no. <laughs> I was like, do you even know what that means? And he's like, yes. <laughs> I was like, come on. Like, I said, who told you that at school? And he's like, no, nah. he didn't say names. He's just like, oh, you know, my friends, like everybody laughs about it all the time. And I said, I get it. You know, like I still laugh at that stuff now. I'm like almost 42 years old. But uh, but no, you can't make a baby doing that. <laughs> it was just like that was the end of the conversation. Fuck me, man. He's 10 years That's old. So like, innocent. Why is he I making 69 jokes for? Like, I know. <laughs> my kids are the same. It's fucking I, I'm hilarious. I'm kind of surprised but, he, he doesn't know where babies come from yet. Like, they definitely definitely taught the kids at our school he uh, does though that's that. a thing he, oh, does. he does yeah okay. he's just he's just oh, he's just around. fucking around oh, yeah cool. yeah good lad yeah i think it's 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 difficult isn't it to know what to do yeah when you're, i i think when you're a kid <laughs> it was exactly like this when we were kids though right like yeah. we, we didn't we, we had ideas and we had people who told us things yeah, and it's like you know you have to pee in a girl's mouth. I mean, mouth. When, when I was at school, AIDS, the AIDS epidemic was just getting going. There was a yes. lot of confusion about AIDS. There was about yeah. how you yeah. could get that, and they were all you can get it from a toilet seat, stuff like that. Oh, it was yeah. all over the playground. You like get it nobody from kissing, fucking knew. everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, because yeah. kids are just sponges, right? And they like you guys have said all but the time. But they're very bad sponges. They're very bad sponges. If you think about a sponge, but... think about a sponge, Lewis. If there's a big spill, you get a sponge. You soak it in whatever is there, and when you pick up the sponge, quite a bit of it is going to fall out, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So if you imagine they soak up information, but a lot of crucial detail leaks out, and then it's right. uncontextualized nonsense that they reassemble into a fact inside their tiny brain. So mm. AIDS can be caught from toilet seats, can be extrapolated into skill is an African bum disease, which was a thing that we were told in school, because right. there was a thing where people would say, mate, that is so skill. And people would say, did you know, skill is an African bum disease. Now, I don't know what an African bum disease is. I don't know if skill is such a thing, but that certainly... But that stuck with you. You're still not sure. I'm still African uncertain. Bum disease. You're still, yeah. still not sure if skill is an African that bum disease. Skill is an African bum later. disease, yeah. Now, I, I don't know if that's true. So listen, I, Flax, you might be uh, aware of this or maybe not, but I'm at this party and I think a lot of them are football fans, right? Because, well... Like the cake was like a Manchester United cake, right? These are like seven year old kids, right? And um, they were they were chanting uh, some football chants, but I think they're like kids football chants. I don't know if these ones make it to like the big stadiums or whatever. But what like the, some of them were really basic. So it was like Liverpool sucks. Like they would just, and they were screaming it like all together at the same time. Liverpool mm. sucks. And there was like other groups like it was this big like activity park thing outside and other groups of kids that were doing other stuff would come over and they'd be like man you sucks <laughs> like they were like getting in like a big fight about it but then there was one where it was like uh what the chant was like liver liverpool go back to school and learn how to kick the the bull <laughs> like it, it, it kind of it kind of rhymed because of their accents but like uh okay that that was the whole chant i don't know if they if they use that one like uh at, that seems very gentle in compared to some of whatever. the stuff i've heard yeah, yeah. chanting liverpool go back to school and learn how to kick the the bull that that's what they were chanting a lot as well that that seemed to be yeah. the popular one i mean the, the, what, a, there there are a lot of uh you should teach your son the 
the In Your Northern Slums football chant, which oh, was very right. popular a lot on the South Coast whenever a team from up north was playing. Right. Do you like a rendition of In Your Northern Slums? And I apologize in advance yes, to anyone from the north. This was I, I did not join in with this song. This was just a song that you would hear on the terraces at, at Bournemouth, and I'm sure you very heard offensive. it at Brighton and Southampton, and it goes like this. In your northern slums, in your northern slums, you look in the dustbin for something to eat. You find a dead rat and you think it's a treat in your northern slums. <laughs> and then there's a second stanza, Fuck which sake. is in your northern slums, <laughs> in your northern slums. Um, this uh, is unbelievable. Uh, it's something about fingering your grandmother. <laughs> Come on! I can't remember the second. On, you shit on the carpet. You piss in the bath. Yeah. You think, you think your, your grandma? grandma you, you think, think it's, it's a laugh? laugh. <laughs> That's right. In your northern sun. <laughs> and so on. So, oh my you know, God. as long as he's still in Liverpool or rubbish or whatever, that that's a that's that's, that's fine. a tame one, yeah. That's, that's a, a tame one. I mean, there have been some really unpleasant ones. Um, that's unpleasant. That is unpleasant. A lot yeah. of homophobic ones and a lot of sure. racist ones you'd hear, although definitely not so much these days. But no, the lower league grounds yeah. are still a hive of scum and villainy. I think people think that Premier League fans are the worst, but they have a lot of stewards and a lot of people in there filming it and getting people booted out and all the rest of it. They've sure. got a PR team to manage this stuff. So they get rid of all those kind of people. You go to lower leagues, you still hear a lot of racist chants. Wow. Yeah. Man, oh man. What a what a oh. scene. What a game. But yeah, I know it was well, the, it was funny. The, the, let's get back to the the mailbag. Get back. The, We've audience. never been in. It's been tw- nearly 25 minutes of podcast. I'm scared of opening that mailbag. You never know I'm, what's going to come out. I'm vetting it. I'm very carefully vetting these, all right? Okay. This Hit is us from with Ta- uh, one, yeah. This is from Taylor, or Tyler. T-A-Y-L-A. I don't know. Either way. <laughs> um, Taylor. Yeah, they say uh, that about mosh pits. Right. My, so Lewis said he compared the Capitol riots to mosh pits in a previous episode. Apparently you did this. Bear in mind, we don't remember or even really know what we're saying half the time. So a yeah. throwaway yes. comment results in 10 emails. So, you know, <laughs> quite funny. Yes. Okay. Um, so up. you basically thought it was a bunch of crazy people beating the shit out of each other in a weirdly socially accepted way. Uh, it's, so It was, it was. Yeah. Right. I so still stand by that. My boyfriend sure. has been a metal fan since his early teens, who's been to many shows and will participate in the pit. I actually right. had told okay. him about the comments and he was disappointed as this community is often looked down upon by others and wishes people took the time to understand what it's all about. So the whole point is no one's actually trying to hurt anybody. If anybody does get punched, the other person will stop and make sure they're okay. Uh, I'm not saying that there aren't outliers to this, but if you're found to be purposely hurting others, you are quickly removed from the pit by other fans slash security. And the artists that play these shows are also the first people to stop the act and and, uh, check with the crowd if someone's been injured, make sure if they're passed out, make sure they're taken care of before continuing. I witnessed this myself at a show I went to this past fall. Just so you're aware, the mosh pit is quite intense, but it's a chance to let loose and let all the bullshit of life go. People do get pretty intense and amped up for it, but it's more of a feeling of being free and being yourself. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, our vision of mosh pits was it was a bunch of people trying to kill each other. Apparently that's incorrect. No, incorrect. no, that's not my vision. That wasn't my vision. My vision was almost like that. Yeah, like a camaraderie of people who are... Like willing to like sh- like want to want to kind of you know there's a lot of people who want to get in a fight right? right like at a pub we always there's there's a couple of people I know who are friends of mine uh, or friends of like friends of mine <laughs> I think what uh, I think what Taylor trying guy to who say likes though to fight. is that it's not about wanting to fight it's mm, about a no. couple of people turning up and just wanting to horse around big time you know oh yeah they want to they want to cuddle each they other just, sure, sips, you know no. like when you were a kid and you had just <laughs> so much energy you didn't know what to do with and then if like your your parents took you to like a jungle gym you would just go like fucking crazy like you would run in there and you'd be like climbing like crazy and throwing yourself around sure. and stuff i think it's sure. like i think it's more like that you know it, it is i've been in a mosh pit and i certainly have been in my fair share of mosh pits when i was a teenager you know uh, my friends were into that kind of music at the time and i sustained <laughs> several injuries to el from elbows and mm, knees and, right. and stuff and i i didn't enjoy it particularly and i don't think it was as at least the gigs that i went to it wasn't like um as super that's sure no one got crushed or like knocked knocked down that bad but it was certainly um we weren't all mate, best mates in there. They were strangers, you know. Man. And I think that, in a sense, the Capitol riots, I felt like it was a little bit like that. It was a shared fury and anger of people getting amped up and wanting to be physical and wanting to be, like, 
angry and 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 with other like-minded people but still strangers I think um, there's elements of that. Like, I, I know I know for sure that... Um, I was just talking because I watched this documentary. I think if that Mosh guy watches the, the documentary, it's like f- five hours, at the, three hours at the Capitol, whatever yeah. it's called, that I watched. Have a look, because, like, it's weirdly familiar. It just I don't know why it reminded me of Mosh Pits, but it did. All right. Um, and maybe you might see it. There are definitely the some people that want to fight in a, in a Mosh Pit, but I, I think mostly those people are ejected maybe maybe that maybe it's changed as well in the last because i haven't been in a mosh pit for 20 years right. so maybe it has changed yeah, maybe. now because i know maybe like, it's you're, like during the fucking, everyone's like bro fisty and they all hug afterwards i don't, I don't know. know but i know like in the like in the 80s like during like uh that that sort of like the punk scene like the diy sort of punk scene you had a lot of like very angry crowd goers who would try to fight in mosh pits and stuff but um like um like Ty- Taylor, Tyler said, even even back then, they would be quickly removed, right? Like you you see footage all yeah, the time they... of like you know like Black Flag or yeah. whatever saying like "fuck you, get out of here" and like to like people that are like agitating other people in a in a mosh pit or whatever. Like it's I think it's like an age old thing at this point. Now. Agreed, agreed. I this definitely is, found uh, it. This this one is scary. going back. This one is going back. This is from Andrew, um, who says we were talking about a trip up Snowden, and I think we all agreed that it would be too knackering to do it. Uh, so apparently you can take a steam train all the way to the, from the base to the summit, and then there's right. a cafe up there that sells booze. So if we did want to do it... You uh, could just, just take, take a train the, up. Take the train, yeah. I think Holy that's crap. Bog. You know what we should do? Like, my, maybe when my kids are a bit older, like, we should do we, we should do Triforce on the road and go to, like, some of these places. But not don't go to, like, really interesting places. Go to, like, sort of, like... I mean, I guess I guess the top of Snowden is pretty interesting. But, you know, we got to find, like, really fucking <laughs> low-key right. dumb places to go to. <laughs> It'd be really funny. But travel very far to get to them as well, you know? Like, like the Windermere Village Hall or something. Yeah, is that what like, if we about? didn't like, live anywhere near just chips, it would be funny to go to just chips like in mm. another city or something or like, like if that. If there's a know? branch of Aldi in the Outer Hebrides, yeah. go there. You can visit or, the Aldi or in the Hooters. Outer Hebrides. Find or a Hooters, exactly. Find like the last oh. standing Hooters somewhere. Find a remote there. Hooters, perhaps one at the top of Snowden. Yes. Uh, and we'll go there. Yeah. Um, That's a so, great uh, idea. We should do uh, an American road trip. Oh, that I mean, I've thought about doing yeah. that for years, doing the, the old uh, American road trip. I'd love that. But you got to be you got to pick the right route because you want to see good stuff. You don't want to just see fields for like a week. Yeah, but if you're if you're pee casting the whole time like we would be, who cares, right? You think like, you get a signal out there in the middle of fucking nowhere. Well, it doesn't matter. What we'll do, we'll just we'll do it offline and then when we get back, you know, we'll have all that footage. Post them. We don't need to uh, you don't, we I mean, don't this, do the, uh, I'm talking. Trail. This is literally days, days yeah. <laughs> of driving through flat, featureless terrain with nothing yeah. but fields and cows. We could do a podcast at like the Ball of Twine. Yes, and like, <laughs> that gigantic teapot in uh, in in where is it? Yeah. There's that big teapot, um, like Charleston, Charleston, or somewhere. Virginia, or somewhere something near. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Holy All crap. Right. I had, I had an email from Jake. We were talking about names. Uh, and in his friend group, born around the, the early 2000s, they have a Craig, an Alan, and a Brian, which Holy. is genuinely of interest to me because you those just wouldn't hear now. any of those names. No. They are old names. They are old names. Uh, and his dad's name is Colin, but with a Y instead of an I. I don't know why he felt the need to point that out, but that is weird. That, that is, is weird odd. Name. Yeah, that's an odd spelling of it Colin. It might be like an Irish spelling or something. You know? Colin. Maybe it's Welsh or something. Colin? Colin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely sounds... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, Welsh. Yeah, Welsh. Uh, here's, here's a message. This is from Michael, a doctor Michael, sorry. This Spelled is with about... a Y or a, no, with an I? just a regular Michael. Oh, okay. This is about CERN and the Large Hadron Collider. Oh, Because we no. were talking about this. We, did, this did is he, genuinely yeah. interesting. We've talked he, about He this? works there. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it. So there's a place at CERN called the SPS Damper. Which, which makes corrections to the beam when it wiggles off course. Right. So first, a machine reads the position of the beam. Then the next turn around the circle, they predict where the beam will be and use an electric field to correct it and put it back on course. To do this, the signal between the measurement and the correction needs to be faster than the beam to make the correction in time, which is fine for the LHC and its smaller accelerators leading up to it. But for the FCC, which is the future circular collider, so... It's going to be the, the the Large Hadron Collider is twenty seven kilometers circumference. The FCC is going to be a hundred kilometer circumference. Jesus. The ring is too big, and that too much can go wrong between the measurement and the correction. 
So the solution was to have multiple corrections around the ring, which talk to each other via lasers above the ground. And they tested it and it didn't work. And they, can you guess why it didn't work? Absolutely uh, not. Uh, uh, I mean, we'd be sorry, here for an doing eternity. They a hundred kilometer yeah. cir circuit yeah. around. Basically, I'm looking at it on the map. It surrounds the whole city of Geneva. It's, yeah, it's like, huge. It's inside it. Yeah, it's huge. And a whole bunch of lakes and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely <laughs> insane. This thing is 100 kilometers long. And in, I mean, the it, LHC is, is insane. 27 kilometers long, yeah. I mean, the LHC is like, but it's, it's liquid nitrogen cooled the whole... It's, it's, a, it's absolutely, ins whole it's absolutely it's, astounding. It's mental. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so the reason incredible. that these corrections didn't work is because pigeons kept flying in the way and disrupting the laser signals. I sure. love the idea that you've built a 100 kilometer long tunnel, potentially, or in this case, 27 kilometers long, got all the biggest brains in the world on there, but they, what, it's just open to the air? I thought it was a fucking tunnel. Yeah, There's maybe. pigeons in there knocking about? Come on, lads. Maybe they forgot to close one of the hatches or something, you know? And, and like, now there's pigeons the in there. pigeons just got in. Now they're just, uh, you this know. This is crazy. Now they're, so here's they, another they one. fricked and now there's pigeons uh, everywhere. A guy that he works with once got called into work in the dead of night because something had gone wrong in one of the rooms where there's loads of wiring and connections where they read the signals from the accelerator. They couldn't figure out what was going wrong until somebody instructed the team to go around the room and jump up and down in unison while somebody read the signals. And if you jumped in a certain part of the room, the connection was loose. And they, they dug through all of these circuit boards and everything and found this one tiny loose connection. Uh, it's just nice to me to know that despite all this high science, sometimes sometimes it is just a loose wire or like it you is just literally have to turn a loose wire or a again. pigeon. Yeah, yeah, it's always a fucking That's pigeon, mate. Pretty crazy. Yeah, science is is so these experiments are really cool. There's this big dark matter experiment being built. I watched um, a very Tassian video on it the other day underneath the, uh, Melbourne in in Australia. It's a, in a gold mine like a mile underground, and it has to be deep that that deep because. Otherwise, muons, which are these mm. high energy po cosmic rays, because they're constantly bombarding us all the time. But if you're a mile underground, that's that's enough to um, protect stop you. most of them. And so they can they're looking for this dark matter, which is very, they think it's very weakly weakly interacting particles. And so so there was this detector in Italy that sort of thinks it might have detected them, but it, and so it has a peak in like you know in February or whatever, and a and a and a low in November. But it's very seasonal, and they wonder whether it could be correlated to anything you know like snow or heat right, or right. anything else, right? So they need to kind of they need to kind of know that, and so that's why they're building it in the on the other side of the world, um, in the other hemisphere. So if oh. it has the opposite pattern, then they know it's something it's hard, to do with the sun, maybe. Then like, they know they're detecting something mm. um, that that could be dark. Matter. It's interesting, but uh, like with a lot of this stuff, I just think I'm glad somebody else gives a shit about this because man, <laughs> it, that ain't me. I well, you don't, don't care about, about the this. the future yeah. of, of science, and you, you have uh, I mean, no I interest do. in it. I, I do care about the future of science, um, but I like getting there, like, and the the long tedious road that it takes to get there. Not so much. No. Oh yeah, that the boring, like the actual experiments and doing all this shit oh. seems dull as ditch water. But yeah. like, just give me the conclusion. Just read me the final page. I yeah. don't need to know the story of how we got it. I don't know. It. But how, it is like, interesting. It's it's good that somebody else is interested in it because it'll push it forward or whatever. But like, I can't imagine ever being that guy who wakes up in the morning. I'm like eating my my toast and I'm like, God, I'm so frustrated about this dark matter that I can't I can't figure it out. It does it happen in November or February or I'm racking my brains here. You know what I mean? Like, I, maybe I'm just like too simple yeah. or something. I don't know. Well, I, I think a lot of science is done and it, it doesn't look like it's a like it's useful on the surface, right? Like a lot of a lot even ever since like back in the day, you know, like um I watched this video about Prince Rupert's drop, which is this um these these when you basically mm. get molten glass you drop it into water. Wait, did you watch that smarter, smarter every day? Smarter every day video. Yeah, 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 it went a bit viral. He gets a little too excited about things that like that was not I that don't interesting. Know. I like I believe it though. I like him being He's great. He, I'm just saying he that feels was genuine. When he went on board a nuclear submarine, that was fantastic. Like he oh, went on a nuclear cool, submarine. Yeah. But he went on one that came up in the North Pole. Wow. Breaks yeah, through yeah, the yeah. ice. You get in, then they go under the ice again and come up somewhere else. And it's Man, all about, I would you know, be shitting myself in oh, a Oh, for submarine. real, dude. I, yeah. like, uh, that is not uh, my idea of a good time. Like, well, I think they're cool. Incredible stuff. I think they are incredible, but I would not want to go on one Dude, person. the scariest I part, I think I spoke about it previously, was that obviously under the pressure of the water, the submarine actually shrinks. 
and they have a piece of string, a literal piece of string that runs the length of the ship. And as the as you go deeper, the string gets slacker and slacker. Holy because, crap. Because the ship is actually shrinking and all the compartments like of, of equipment have gaps and the sort of squeezy bits in them. So that as the ship compresses, the equipment gets smushed together. If you didn't have those gaps, then they just fucking crunch as the ship compresses. Jesus. It's incredible. That's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. nuts. That's the engineering design of these things. Uh, you know, I watched, uh, there was the Adam Ruins Everything guy did a thing w- with government on Netflix the other day. President Obama, ex, sorry, former, faux potus Obama was, uh, was, was in it as like an executive producer. And he flew into a fucking, the eye of a hurricane to like, because that's how the weather is like done. There's this whole meteorological. Yes. Like, we're going to uh, fly who actually... into the uh, eye of a hurricane. <laughs> you might wonder why we're going to do that. I don't think he was and, there. Uh, but, uh, it was it's there. It's like all this good stuff. And it's, yeah, I, I, but a lot of science, like, even back in the day, like this Prince Rupert's drop thing was, was this guy, um, Boyle, who obviously did a lot of important stuff. Back Boyle's in, Law. Sort of, Isaac Newton's time, yeah. And I'm sure a lot of these developments uh, were crucially important to developing all of the technologies, things that we can take for granted today. But certainly at the time, I think him fucking around with a few springs and doing them underwater or whatever, or pendulums, didn't feel like it was anything. And I th- feel like the same way about a lot of these experiments, like the high high energy physics ones and dark matter detection. You know, It doesn't seem like there's an obvious application, mm. but I think that it's good to do this. I think it's called pure science. Um, in the same in the same way that it will eventually lead to um, cool science, yeah. yeah, yeah, cool breakthroughs that will change you know, how we operate. Here's um, a, here's a change of pace for you, Lewis. This is someone having a go at you, but don't worry because there's a follow up email that that admonishes you. All right, okay, is it fine, by the same sure. person? Or is it is it the follow up email? I'm bracing in brackets, myself. Big fan, by the way. Keep because, up the good no, work. I guess this is why I was dreading these emails because I do see Reddit posts and comments on the podcast, and they're like, "Lewis is a fucking clueless fool. Right. He won't take a position. He's always the he always either argues with sips or period or just says yes and it's like." Like I, I'm, I know I'm a, I'm a, I, I, I know. A flake. I don't want to hear you're it. You're a flake. Listen, I don't want you to tell listen, me. Listen, listen. You're allowed to talk. You're a hack. Like whatever you want, because this is three lads having a conversation. This isn't some fucking scientific document <laughs> that we're submitting. <laughs> And they're they're marking this isn't it. This, party, isn't a, this isn't the trifles party manifesto. Yeah, this isn't some gonna, paper we're, su- we're submitting for ideas review. Ideas are not actually going to affect the world right. in any way, shape, or form. Wow. And if we, I mean, I, I bet everyone in their daily life says some wrong things. I bet all of you out there listening to this right now are wrong on the daily, just like the rest of us. So don't yeah, come up, okay, get off your right. fucking high case, horse. Leave I'll, Lewis I'll, alone. No, I'm willing to take your. T- uh, no, you've opened it up, P. Flex. I want to take their right. take their criticism. Well, and here you take go. It on board. Hello, Let's Pyrian. This is from Jordan. My name is Jordan, and I have a minuscule penis. I've listened to the entirety of the Triforce podcast. I have Can a few you say episodes... it in a nicer in a nicer way, as right. if he's a fan? I have a, a few episodes on repeat to make me laugh. So far, I've held my tongue and not reached out. However, the latest episode, in which Lewis has a rant about Van Gogh and his art, has drove me mad. <laughs> <laughs> Here we fucking go. Well, he might be an expert in R, but he doesn't know any English. Well, no, I might have read that. Uh, Lewis, I misread that. Uh, Lewis genuinely believes, although he did spell tongue wrong. So there you go. Lewis genuinely believes that anywhere near half the population of the country has any idea who Goff is. He means Van Gogh. Surely he has somewhat of a more realistic grasp of the time we live in. Half the kids of this era can't Google him because they've no idea how to spell his name. If Starbucks rebounded his art, it would be like when Kanye and Paul McCartney collaborated. The youth all applauded Kanye for setting off Paul's career. They would respond the same to Starbucks and Goff. Anyway, rant over, huge fan. Have a nice day. <laughs> That's not a rant. So he's suggesting that people don't know who Van Gogh is. He's the most famous, isn't he? I mean, he's the most famous Yeah, but how many TikToks ever. does he have? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, I I've got a follow-up for I you. See. This, this, this redeems you, Lewis. In, in my opinion, okay. and in I hope Jordan's opinion. <laughs> okay. This is from Luke. Hi, Perian. He's Dutch. I really enjoyed episode. I'm not going to do it. Two twenty of the that, Triforce yeah. podcast. <laughs> Listening whilst working from home no. for the Van Gogh Museum. He <laughs> <laughs> He works for the Van Gogh Museum. <laughs> oh fuck! Holy First shit. off. If you ever find yourself in Amsterdam, I'd happily arrange a tour for you in our museum. Just let me know in advance. We'll get something set up. Now, regarding your discussion on the fame of Van Gogh, 
Should you care, these are the numbers from my perspective and research done by the museum. In a number of countries polled across the globe, 93% of people recognize the name Van Gogh, and 85% of respondents recognize at least one painting, notably the sunflowers. Where, okay, museum, where was this poll yeah. taken? At the museum? A number of countries around the world. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay, but was it taken at the museum from people that happened to be from a number of countries from around the world? No, I don't think so. Because I think it's an important point to make, though. If if you've sought out that museum in the first place, right, you're gonna you're 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 gonna be right. like I, above average in knowledge on on I, I that subject. I don't believe they've done that. Right. I think that they these this is polling done outside the museum because okay. it would be obvious to anyone. Yeah. Like, if you're in a Starbucks and you ask people coming in, have you ever heard of Starbucks? They'd be like, yes. Yeah. There you go. 100% of people know Starbucks. Like, obviously. Yeah, that's but that's the, the kind of shit that, that happens all the time, though. That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, Luke, please I'm clarify. I'm just saying, I watch a lot of Pointless, right? <laughs> if people said, name a famous artist on Pointless, and then the, the little dong, it would go to, like, 90%. Yeah, like, I agree. Like, no. You, if you said that would be not a pointless answer, yeah, everyone knows yeah, Van Gogh. Yeah. Van Gogh. Up, oh, it's so easy to say Van Gogh. Who do you think would be the pointless um, answer, Jim? Jim Gahuli. Jim. Jim Gahuli. Jim Gahuli. Jim Gahuli's glass. Glass. Fucking Famous what artist is he? to craft uh, dong shapes with glass. Uh, go. <laughs> here's another. Here's another flex from Luke here in this email. Our museum welcomed around two million visitors annually before COVID. Most of them tourists from outside the Netherlands. Comparatively, the Rijksmuseum, located next door to our museum, which holds many famous paintings by Dutch masters, has a much smaller share of visitors that are international tourists. So he's just flexing on the Rijksmuseum there. His right. name's not even Jim. It's Dale. Dale Chihuly. <laughs> not Jim Gilhuly. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we were fucking saying. What's it took name? me like 10 minutes to Google this. I've been Googling him and I was like, What's his Ch- name? Ch- not- Chihuly Gilhuly. <laughs> What's his actual name? <laughs> Dale Chihuly. <laughs> Jim Gilhuly. Dale! I Come believe on, it's the, Jim Gilhuly. That's Gil-Huli. a name that's gone as well, right? You never you never bump into a Dale that anymore. That shows you how fucking, our memory. J- Dale, Dale Chihuly. We yeah. went to his fucking museum. <laughs> you went to his museum. All day. I know, we spent wait, a lot of wait, time you there. you lads went to the Jim Gilhuly Museum? Really? No, the Dale yeah, Chihuly you mean Jim Place. Gilhooly? I think you've misspoken. <laughs> it's Jim Gilhooly. Yeah. Gil- Gil- Garden and Glass. Flex was anyway, in yeah. Seattle kind of recently, right? You could have gone. <sighs> Years it's, ago, it's, mate. I can't remember where it is. Either actually. way, yeah, uh, it's, it's right the next space to the space. Needle. It's right next to the space needle. Okay? Very yeah, popular. Yeah. It's Thank popular. you, Luke. It's good. I liked it. We like. We had a nice day. Yeah, it we? was great. Yeah. Yeah, we should definitely have podcasted from there. It's what we should have done. Yeah, we should have actually. Holy crap, that yeah. would have been a well. Fantastic we could do it again. One. Yeah. This is uh, an email from Corey. Uh, we talked about um, the villages, uh, and he says that he lives near the villages in Florida. Oh, the villages yeah. in Florida, the retirement and area. He, ha- they, right, he yeah, said yeah. it has a very bad reputation. Apparently, from what I've been told by younger people that live in the area, all the old people there are massive swingers and have wild swinger parties, and they apparently even wear different colors to show what level of swinger they are. Uh, really? Corey doesn't really? know what that means. He's never personally been, but he'll do a drive-by there soon and give a trip report back. Thank you, the Corey. Villages sw- God bless you, Corey. Colors. Big up uh, to Corey on this episode for his service. He's going to do some investigations for us into the... He's like our own Louis Theroux. He's going to go and he's going to get involved. He's going to he's going to embed himself into this community and figure out what makes them tick. I can't mm, wait. There's a, there's a, there's a loofah code. Or something. Something to do with... So, some people yeah. always say... My mum always said to me that if you ever see that pampas grass growing out someone, outside someone's house, that means they're a swinger. That's what oh. she told me. All right. Because uh, that was her friend Carol had told her that. They were... Like, you go around Bournemouth and there'd be people. You know that? It's like the really long stem, Fucking... fluffy at the top That's another grass. name, by the way, that you never hear anymore. Carol. Carol. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't hear a Carol very often. Yeah. Rest in peace, Carol. Oh, my mum's best mate. I found mate. it. I found the loofah code. What is a so, loofah code? I think you use like a little loofah, a little rose, a rose looking sponge thing that you wash with a bath, and you have you wear a color of loofah based on your uh, preference. So like white is novices and beginners, purple is voyeurs, uh, pink is soft swap. People who like to do it with others in the room. Actually, that's, that feels like everything. Uh, blue is full swap. 
Um, yellow is mid swap. I don't know. I don't know what that means. What are the difference on these swaps? It's, I need more information than this. I think it's to do with where on your body the fluid you want to swap is located. Oh my! Are you just God. swapping spit, or are you stop swapping uh, the rest of it? What's it? Where's okay. the? What is the um, tier for wanting poop on your chest? <laughs> <laughs> That's a brown loop. That's the brown loop for obviously. Nice, nice. Okay, good to know. Good to know. A lot of people telling me, by the way. Because I said, if you're riding a bicycle, wear a helmet. Uh, I would say if you're swinging, wear a rubber johnny. Oh, so God, wear yeah. a helmet in every and situation. A helmet, a helmet on well. your old fella. Yeah. Uh, get a helmet on your head as well. A lot of people saying, oh, I don't need to wear a helmet because I trust myself on my bicycle. I think that's stupid. Wear, wear one. Apparently in the Netherlands, they never wear helmets. Yeah, I think that's... Because a, it's, they're, they're so safe. I'm not saying that wearing a helmet will save your life if a car clobbers you. I get it. And if you have really safe cycles paths and all the rest of it you might think i don't need to wear one nobody ever falls off we got all this safety 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 i'm just saying you're in an elevated position on a bicycle there's a chance something goes wrong why not wear one you i wear one when i'm cycling thing. in the yeah. park i agree why take I, a chance i agree yeah. why take yeah. a chance we're, there's no value to not helmet. wearing one i don't know why we're telling these people where how old is the smart enough or uh they could do with knocking down a bit you know yeah they're too smart is yeah. what i'm saying agree Knock a few brain cells out of your head by by falling off your skateboard. Yeah, you'll be happier. That's all I'm saying. Hey, right, well, that, that just reminded me. Go I, I just want to share with you. Uh, apparently, there's a new Beavis and Butthead movie coming out. Okay. And apparently, after the movie's been out, a new series is being aired as well. Oh, I wow. It's, it is definitely... Um, I mean, this has been there a long a lot time. There's this. a lot of rebooting going on. There always is, but it seems to be... It's starting to get a bit weird. You Beavis know? and Butthead, like, I feel like, could be good, but I don't know. It's I feel like Beavis and Butthead is very much of its time as well, right? Like, I don't know if it... I don't know if it'd be as funny. Like, I've gone back and watched old Beavis and Butthead and laughed because it was funny. And I was around when it was coming out, and I remember it being funny and stuff. But I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. My son likes Beavis and Butthead. Like, when I told him that there's going to be a movie, he's like, oh, God, I want to go see that. Like, he, he, <laughs> he likes oh the idea God. of it. So I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe it's... Uh, well, it's his name's Butthead. I don't think it's really for kids, though. It's, it never not really, really was. no. It's, it's not really, yeah. Kids. But, um, um, but yeah, there, I just thought I'd share. Yeah, it's going to be so weird. Because the show was weird. It was weird, yeah. It was weird. I mean, then again, it lasted a long time. Hmm. They did a they did a season in 2011. Actually, it turns out. Oh, did they? Apparently. Yeah, there was like a rebooted season, and this is a Bob's Burgers movie as well, which is which I keep being advertised to me constantly. So it's not a scam. Right. Uh, it just it's just, but I like Bob's Burgers. I don't know. There's like I think there's just better things than Beavis and Butthead. They've done a, they've Jane, redone Jane. Fresh Prince, which is like all serious now. Um, what what yeah, they have, Grassy yeah. Junior High needs to be rebooted. Uh, Saved by the Man. Bell, if it's not already been rebooted. Full House was rebooted, right? Didn't Screech from Saved by the Bell do a porno? I don't think I'm wrong. In, he did, in and he died it. as well. He's yeah, he's he did also away. die. Yeah, but yeah, he did do a porno. Yeah, he had um, he was he had some 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 big um issues in his life. Issues. Yeah. Oh my God! Talking of issues, the other day, all right. So I watched Thelma and Louise. Right. All right. So Thelma and Louise was tremendous i hadn't seen it in a 30 years probably i haven't yeah. seen it in a very long time and it's a really good movie very very ahead of its time and really beautifully shot and really really good very young brad pitt in it i think it's one of his first roles and michael madsen is in it as well mm -hmm. and i'm watching it with mrs f and she said that michael madsen's no good he's a piece of shit it's a shame he's a piece of shit i said why do you think michael madsen's a piece of shit she goes oh he's like he did all this drugs and his like domestic abuse and everything i was like you're not thinking of michael madsen i don't think he's done that looked him up he was he was uh in he was the guy who cut the ear off in reservoir dogs that's, that's right, Michael yeah. Madsen. yeah yeah um, yeah, he was in. Um, he's in Quentin Tarantino stuff. He's, well. yeah, he's in a whole bunch of movies. Yeah. yeah, and he was in the. the, the he was in the, Kill Bill. Um, he was the guy in the trailer. Kill Bill, yes. yeah, 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 Snake yeah, and all yeah. that. So Michael Madsen has not had a messed up personal life that I no, can I find. He was actually a very nice, man. very nice guy. He's done a lot of stuff for charity. He seems like a very. He does play dude. bad evil characters. Too, he does. Though. Yeah, but he's a, he's a. I, I have I have nothing against Michael Madsen. I was surprised. She was confusing him with Tom Sizemore. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, that, <laughs> I, I, I was, was going to mention Tom Sizemore, but I, w I wanted to see where this was going. But yeah, Tom so, Sizemore is like the, the ultimate um, supporting actor, shit. right? But yeah. turns out he he's also everything. the biggest piece of shit ever as well. Yeah. yeah. So Tom You're Sizemore, right. who, who always played the reliable 
guy. Like, yeah. he was the sergeant in Saving Private Ryan. He was like yeah. Mr. Dependable. He's yeah. a piece of shit. Okay, so this is interesting. He went out with Heidi Fleiss, the Hollywood madam, Heidi Fleiss, was yes. his girlfriend. He was convicted of domestic violence against Heidi Fleiss. He was sentenced to seven months in jail and four months in drug treatment for repeatedly failing drug tests while on probation. He was caught attempting to fake the urine test using a whizinator. Now, I didn't know what a whizinator is, but it's basically a way of stashing someone else's <laughs> pee in a way that you can then, it's like a false oh. penis and a heater pack and everything. <laughs> it's like, it's, <laughs> oh, oh my God. Right, well, wait, yes, I'm, pr- I'm ready to do my urine sample right now. Would you like yeah. me to start? Whips it out. I mean, yeah, so the, the, he used a, the whizinator, which is just hilarious. Um, I, I'm not going to go into the sexual abuse allegations because they're not funny. They are, those are no, awful. No, of course, yeah. Um, not awful. But uh, he w- he's basically been caught for drugs constantly. While on probation, he gets arrested outside a Sheraton Hotel in California with methamphetamine. He goes on Dr. Phil in 2018. Um, he did a uh, porno as well, did he not? He did, yeah. In early 2014, a recording emerged of Sizemore alleging that his former girlfriend, friend of the Triforce podcast Elizabeth Hurley, oh, had an no. affair with Bill Clinton in 1998. That's what he claims. Right. Uh, <laughs> he then says, no, it was false. I was high at the time. He's then on Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew, which is a show that aired in America where they get... Celebrity rehab. Celebrity rehab. rehab. He was on this. Uh, Drew Pinsky uh, said that um, s- that Sizemore sat in his office for two hours, sweating, completely high on drugs, talking a million miles an hour, acting like he was going to do the show, then deciding he didn't want to. Then he did appear on the show's third season, arriving as a special guest because Heidi Fleiss was also on the show, his ex-girlfriend. Both she and Sizemore had to consent to appear together and they basically turned up and had this big fucking clash at the end. Uh, she taunted Sizemore that the thought of being with him would turn women gay. Uh, so then he's obviously angry, he's still on drugs. Please no count contest in 2017 to two charges of domestic abuse against his girlfriend. He got 36 months of probation, 30 days of, of, uh, Fuck me, of uh, man. community service. He was also subject to two protective orders. And then the deal was made to avoid spending 210 days in, in jail. This is then unbelievable. In 2013, he claimed he began to achieve sobriety after a stern interrogation from Robert De Niro, who personally checked him into rehab. But in 2019, oh he's arrested God. again for that? possession of illegal narcotics. Can you imagine that, that conversation with Robert De Niro pointing his finger at you yeah. and like fucking telling you to get off the get off the coke? But dude, he, uh, if you look at his filmography, it's become part of his personality now, though. I guess. Look, Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's tragic. Scumbag. It's tragic. But if you look at his filmography, he's in all of these big movies like. Just all these big movies, and then all of a sudden... Why are they still casting him? He feels like a fucking liability. I don't know if they are. Go go to 2011. He makes 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 10 movies in 2011. In 2013, he makes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 movies. 2014, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 movies. 2015, he makes 8 movies. 2016, 2017, he makes like 15 movies. Jesus. 2018, he makes 10 movies. These are all straight to fucking the bin garbage movies. Like one called I Am Not For Sale, The Fight To End Human Trafficking. He plays a doctor. He's in a film <laughs> called Monster Hunters as Colonel Mayweather. He's in a film called Clean, C-L-E-A-N, a Croatian horror thriller. And he plays Mr. Okay. Wilkins, the manager. So he's just doing anything. His agent is a fucking legend, by the way. <laughs> and he, if, you're, if you're looking for work in Hollywood, find out who his agent is, because he is clearly a scumbag. His life is just playing out like gets extras. In so many roles. Yeah. It's tragic. Fuck yeah, me, tragic. man. Crazy. Well, good for him, I suppose, or not. Jeez. No, oh, bad, for him. Gone, gone bad for him. Anyway, Thelma and Louise. Yeah, great movie. Um, it's like a buddy cop, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, buddy crime. Yeah, they yeah. But basically she like and a road Selma, trip, right? I, yeah, I, I, I think if I remember right. It, uh, Thelma or Louise, like, like that was the one problem I had was remembering which of them was Thelma and which was Louise. I think Thelma is is I think Susan Sarandon is Louise. Sure. And uh, I think Thelma is the other one. Um, I was going to say Gwen Stefani, but it's clearly not Gwen Stefani. What's her? Gina, Gina Davis. Davis. Fuck me. Um, who looks 
gorgeous in this movie, by the way. Um, she uh, she's like six foot tall. She was married to Jeff Goldblum quite famously. Yes. Made Cutthroat Island, yeah. which was a disaster, and that was pretty much the end of her career, unfortunately, because she's she's a good actor. So yeah, it's a good movie. Next email. This is a very yes. long one from Luke. I'm not going to read anything like as much of this, Luke, but he has listed some dead phrases because his dad uses these dead phrases, and I thought these were quite good. Slicker than owl shit, which he says when it's really <laughs> icy outside. Slicker, Slicker than, than owl, shit. owl shit. Yeah. Tighter than a frog's ass, which is used to refer to a tight squeeze, but could also be refused to someone who's cheap. Could be. I feel like you could put that as anyone. You could. Take, could be you any could animal's tighter ass. Tighter than a wasp's ass. Tighter than a wasp's have, ass is good. Have, tighter than a gnat's. Tight, tighter than a gnat's chuff is I'd one that I would imagine that a squirrel's <laughs> ass would be pretty tight as well. Like a yeah. little squirrel. I, I just like the use of the word chuff in tighter than a gnat's chuff. I think that's good. Sure, um, I like that. If it yeah. has tits, tires, or wires, it's bound to cause you trouble. Um, because they obviously <laughs> oh, are sexist and both work with tits, machines a lot. Tires or wires? Yeah. Fucking hell! That's literally, literally like half the planet everything. and every piece of machinery. So yeah, um, I don't know whether to shit or wind my watch, which I guess is a phrase like I don't if know you're to shit or wind yeah, my watch. Yeah. That's a weird one. What does one. that mean? Uh, what does that mean? I don't know. He, that, in, when would you use that? Well, apparently, this is the brackets, I have nothing to do, is the closed brackets. That is the uh, explanation given for oh, the application of this phrase. Like I'm bored. So if you're just like, standing around and saying, Jesus, I don't know whether to shit or wind my watch. Like that, he's oh, lost, right. for, lost for motivation as to what to do, I suppose. Okay. okay. Uh, and then this is a pretty Strange. common one. Balls, said the queen. If I had two, I'd be the king. Uh, used constantly in exasperation. Apparently, so yeah, these Balls. are the really interesting Set dead phrases. Queen. Yeah, dead phrases that his dad uses. <laughs> I, a lot of them the uh, are dead for a reason, right? Yeah, they're terrible these are, phrases. In all these are stinkers. They're rubbish. Yeah, they, they are, are rubbish. Yeah. Stinkers. They, they they need so much deciphering. Yeah. And some of them are so long-winded, like the balls one, man. Yeah, that's that's no good as a daily. That's that's awful. In yeah. fact, I do also have um, a book that my friend Sarah sent me, which is a list of Texan phrases. Right. Uh, which I think you guys might like. Uh, for example, like a one legged man at a butt kicking contest. Uh, <laughs> a person who's not very coordinated or successful. <laughs> that does kind of it up straight into that your is mind. So specific. Holy crap. I like, I like the ones that paint such a beautiful picture. Yeah. Um, I mean, here's a good one. You don't yeah. want someone from Texas to say that you're as ugly as homemade soap. <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> yeah. Ugly as homemade soap. Homemade soap. Yeah, it's like it's like seeing those brown sh those brown cubes in Lush or whatever that they have. Um, yeah, of that like oh, I know exactly what it looks like. Yeah, I love it. You don't want a Texan yeah. to say that you're all hat and no cattle, which is a person who's all talk and no substance. Yeah, all my God, he's no all cattle. hat, no cattle. <laughs> you do yeah. want them to say, "Well, you're as quick as a hiccup," which means you're you're very bright. As quick as a hiccup. Quick as a hiccup. Nice. That's, that's cute. cute yeah. That's cute. You could say that to a little kid, couldn't you? You could. Well, you, but you wouldn't yeah. want them to say, you're as ugly as a mud fence. <laughs> no, I suppose <laughs> you wouldn't fence. really. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. you would like them to say, you're as handy as hip pockets on a hog. <laughs> <laughs> hip pockets on a hog. That's a very... That's a, that's a weird one. I quite like it. Is it wearing a little tool belt? It's just it's handy like, on a pig. It's got little pockets. I suppose. You, yeah. You definitely okay. don't want a Texan to say that you're as you're older than two trees. Not just one tree, <laughs> two trees. Well that's even older than just yeah. one He's older trees. Than two trees. Trees. trees can be really old. Older than two trees. You do want a Texan to say you're as happy as a gopher in soft dirt. Which I quite like. <laughs> well, we all know how much gophers like they soft dirt. They love soft dirt. They love soft <laughs> dirt. Uh, that's uh, so well known. Yeah. It's it goes without of saying. Of course, sure. of course. Jeez. Te Texans seem, so whole book of seem these, crazy yeah. to me, yeah. I've never been to Texas before, but... Um, oh, it's, a great, it's a great state. It really is. But it it's sounds so, like a lot of so fun. so vast. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every, everybody really is very Texan. This is, I mean, if you go to Dallas and everything, they're a bit different. You know, the big city is a bit different. Uh -huh. um, but if you go out into the into actual, like, the bulk of the country, which is just, like fucking texas like it's just massive ranches and huge roads and yeah 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 it, it really is as texas as you expect it to be everybody really does talk like that howdy how you doing howdy partner you know they all literally wear cowboy hats and they all have their shirts tucked into their jeans and yeah. cowboy boots like they really do go for that whole texan thing and they're they're great fun they really are i mean they're obviously they're 
from from my perspective, we wouldn't agree on much. But I bet, uh, hell, I'd like to have a beer with you, partner, and maybe shoot some pool. That would be fine. <laughs> oh, man. Well. Uh, so, oh, so here we go. Wait, wait, wait. You don't want a Texan to say you don't know whether to scratch your watch or wind your butt. That what? might be the origin of that phrase. I don't know whether to shit or wind my watch. They say, I don't know whether to scratch my watch or wind my butt. Because that's like... <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. It's that's like... actually clever. And that this guy's dad, the reason that's a dead phrase is because it's fucking wrong, son. It's like get a... This, get this one in there. It's, it's a, it's a, it's corrupted. like a play on words on an old classic, you know, they just yeah. jumbled it around a bit to make That's it funny. more clever. Yeah, that is funny. That's what happens over time though. Like do you, these people forget and they get things wrong and they just, everything gets slightly corrupted and changed and less funny or weird as a result. And people don't care when they're old too. They just fucking say whatever they want. You know, it's happening more and more with us. Indeed. You know, we just, we just don't care. Fuck it. Um, holy crap. These have been uh, great, great mail. These have been. I just way. want to give a very, very quick shout out. There are quite a few of them that I'm not going to read because they followed a similar theme. Well, we can always get them next time, right? We can Thank get you them to next everyone time. who agreed with me that <laughs> Gillingham is a dump. I got a lot of emails <laughs> okay, in support sure. of that. Uh, some Portsmouthians saying, yes, we all know Gillingham's a dump, but come on, Portsmouth is great. No, you are also a dump. I'm going to chuck Portsmouth in there. I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> I do not accept your, your allyship in this. Okay. Fuck Gillingham and fuck Portsmouth both. <laughs> And don't get me started on Southampton. <laughs> well, we, we won't. Oh, we have God, time. Yeah. No. Uh, thank goodness. Don't mention yeah. it. Jesus. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll see you, see you next week, everyone. We'll be back then with more of these podcasts. Thanks for joining us. Peace. Bye. 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 Bye.